Seen some people are waiting for the release of their family members in front of the prison. However, there was a different scene in that place. The convicts who come from tribes or low castes cannot be released immediately. They have to see first. On the other side, there are some police are negotiating because they have not disclosed a case. Therefore, the police bribe the prison officers so that the convicts who should not be arrested again can be made suspects in unresolved cases in order to get promotions. Meanwhile in a sub-district of Viluparam a group of people from the lower caste of Arula tribe. They work as snake and mouse catchers. Because they come from a low caste and ethnic group that is not recognized, they often get discriminatory and harsh treatment, including from the headman. In the evening, Rajakanya was seducing his wife to make a baby. His wife's name is Senjini. At first, Senjini refused because of the leaking condition of the house. Then, Raj promised his wife that one day he would build a permanent home for her. Senjini reminded her husband that if they came from a low caste, the authorities would definitely not allow them to build a permanent house. Furthermore, when they were making out, the walls of their house collapsed due to the heavy rain that fell. It made them sad. The next morning, the headman's wife was making up, she accidentally dropped the earrings that she was going to wear. When she gonna wear the earring, suddenly a snake came to find a mouse. Because of that she immediately screamed. Next, the headman calls for Raj to catch the snake. Once there, Raj immediately looked for the snake. He also found an earring belonging to the headman's wife, and he immediately returned the earring. However, even though Raj had helped her, the headman's wife still looked down on Raj. She wasn't even considered a part of that village. The next night, there was a teacher named Mithra who wanted to devote herself to teaching the Arula people to read and write. She did not discriminate against caste or class and treated them the same as humans. One day, some members of the Arula tribe applied for a caste certificate at the civil registry office. But for the umpteenth time, they get discriminatory actions. There, the staff refused their application because the existence of the Arula was not recognized. The employee said that the certificate was useless for the Arula, because they have no recognized land or place to live and they are not included in the electoral data. At a religious event, Senjini complained of feeling nauseous. She also informs Raj that she is pregnant. Raj feels happy after hearing that. He also carried his daughter, Ali. Raj realizes that he will have another child so he intends to find a job outside the city as a brick maker to earn more money. But Senjini feels sad and doesn't want Raj to leave her. Meanwhile, Mithra tries to fight for the rights of the Arula people to be included in the electoral list and get the right to vote. Furthermore, at the headman's house, the money and jewelry were being stolen. The headman was initially unable to suspect anyone, but his wife was crying and cursing and regretting that she had called Raj to the house to catch the snake, although it is not clear who did it. However, the police and the headman alleged that Raj had committed the theft. Then, police named Guru Murthy issued an arrest warrant on Raj's behalf. And that night, they rushed to the Arula tribe to arrest Raj on charges of robbery. After arriving at the Arula tribal settlement, the police acted arbitrarily against the residents there. They did not hesitate to beat the people of the Arula tribe. They even beat and dragged Senjini who was pregnant. Even though there was an old policeman who reminded him, but Guru Murthy didn't care about that. Because they could not find Raj's whereabouts, the police just arrested Senjini. Some time later, in front of the Chanai High Court, a group of lawyers staged a demonstration to demand that the police who had abused the lawyers be brought to justice. The action was led by a lawyer named Chandru. After that, one of the two star generals named Virasami met the lawyer to question the action. After that, Chandru suddenly jumped over the action guardrail and entered the high court to help some poor families. It turned out that he was handling the case of Habis Corpus complaints from convicts who were re-arrested after being released at the beginning of the film. Habis Corpus is an action such as a pre-trial trial with the aim of demanding justice for arrests and detentions that are not in accordance with the procedures carried out by the authorities, as well as the application for rehabilitation and compensation for the victims. Furthermore, the lawyer of the related party in this case the police arrived late. This made the judge question the ethics of the lawyer. When the trial began, Chandru revealed that the police had arrested several people over the past several years on various charges. The police also resorted to violence against these people. However, the lawyer for the police denied this by submitting an investigation file. But Chandru immediately refuted this with a copy of Evie's evidence. Finally the judge won the plaintiffs and the judge also formed an investigative team to investigate the case. Chandru is a lawyer who likes to help the poor and low caste to get justice. He often helps citizens who get arbitrary actions from the authorities. Next, Senjini accompanied by Mithra came to meet Chandru and asked Chandru to help her get justice. While at Chandru's house, Senjini told about the various types of violence she had experienced. Saddened, Senjini recounted how she was initially arrested and beaten by the police. After arresting Senjini, the police then arrested Raj's brother, Iru Tappan. But because they didn't know where Raj was they were beaten by the police. Not only that, the police also arrested Raj's younger sister and Raj's nephew, Mosakari. But they still didn't know where Raj was so they had to be beaten by the police using a rattan. After seeing it's beaten, Senjini couldn't do something. she just scream and cry. On the other side, Raj, 
who had just returned from out of town, was immediately arrested by the villagers on the charge that he had committed a robbery. Then he was handed over to the police. After that, he was tied up and beaten by Guru Murthy. At the police station, they were interrogated, but because no one admitted to stealing because they didn't steal, they were tortured by the police. Even Raj swears by his son if he and his brother don't steal but the police are even more brutal by putting chili and salt on Raj's wound. In the evening, Mosakari asks the police to release Raj's younger sister and arrest only the boys. This makes the police feel angry and abuses Raj's sister in front of the other prisoners. Some time later, Senjini who has been released then visits Raj in custody. She felt hysterical because she saw her husband hanging with his hands and feet tied. Not long after, Raj was reunited with Senjini. Senjini couldn't hold back her tears when she saw her husband who was full of wounds. Iruta and Mosakati said that they were no longer strong enough to endure all this torture. But Raj says if we have to be patient because indeed we don't steal. Senjini cried again when her husband couldn't swallow food due to the wound he suffered. But that made Guru Murthy even more angry. He then drags Raj back into custody. The good old cop then orders Senjini to find an influential person to save her husband. Then Senjini went to the headman's house to ask for help. But the headman rebuked her by saying that Raj was a thief. He also didn't want to help because he became the headman not because of the Arula tribe or because of her caste. Next, she went to the chairman of one of the parties to ask for help. However, because the police had strong witnesses, this did not come to fruition either. The problem gets bigger when the police say that Raj and his two brothers have escaped from prison. However, Senjini did not give up. She kept trying to find help to help and looking for her husband. But that didn't work either, until someone suggested her to meet Chandru, a lawyer who used to defend the oppressed. That's what makes Senjini meet Chandru. After hearing various statements from Senjini, then Chandru analyzed the files and facts related to the case that ensnared Raj and his brother. He also learned about the violation of the code of ethics committed by the police in the case. Furthermore, he intends to petition Habia Scorbus to fight for justice for Senjini and her family, on the basis that no one should be detained and treated arbitrarily without going through a legal process. However, Chandru also reminded Senjini that the court only pays attention to evidence and they will also face strong parties. Therefore, this method is not necessarily successful and becomes a challenge to fight for justice. Then, they went to court. Before the trial begins, Chandru asks Senjini to tell the truth to save them. Not long after, the trial finally began. Chandru told the judge that his client, Senjini, was looking for her husband who was missing in police custody with his two brothers. Therefore, Chandru asked the panel of judges to accept the habeas corpus he proposed. He also asked the judge to examine all the police and case files related to the three people. After that, Senjini testified at the trial. She said she last saw her husband being dragged into custody. However, now the police claim that her husband has escaped from custody along with his two brothers. Therefore, Senjini asked the panel of judges to accept her request and look for her husband. After hearing Senjini's testimony, the panel of judges accepted the application for Habia Scorbus which had been submitted through Chandru, and the trial was adjourned for three days. Now, the first trial of the Habia Scorbus application has finally been held. The police as the defendant presented evidence and the chronology of the escape of the three detainees through a lawyer. However, this statement was denied by Chandru, because Chandru thinks it's not true. It is based if the police have tortured the detainees. Because of that, Chandru asked the panel of judges to conduct a cross-examination in order to get a clear point. At first, the defendant's lawyer rejected the application, because in the Habia Scorbus trial there was no cross-examination. But Chandru argues that there is jurisprudence that has inspired laws from other courts that allow cross-examination in the Habia Scorbus trial. Based on this, the panel of judges accepted Chandru's request, and ordered the relevant parties in this case as the police to present all witnesses in this case. Meanwhile, Chandru and Mithra are also looking for new evidence and facts that can express their request. Next, the second trial began. This time, the first witness to be heard was Dr. Mahesh. He is a doctor who treats prisoners. Here Chandru finds evidence that Mahesh is a fake doctor so that his statement cannot be justified. This is supported by other clues that do not make sense related to Dr. Mahesh's statement, namely that the detainees went to clinics that were not in line, and it was impossible for the escaped prisoners to roam in front of the police station. Therefore, Chandru proposed that an investigator named Inspector Bashyam be presented as a witness. The parties concerned, of course, refused to do so. Moreover, they have strong witnesses. However, Chandru convinces the judge so that the panel of judges accepts Chandru's request. However, the retrial had to be postponed. It was during the interval between the two trials that the defense lawyers asked Inspector Bashyam to protect his department by saying that he forgot or did not know when asked at trial. Then the trial continued. At first Inspector Bashyam was able to testify as per plan. But Chandru found new evidence that he as an investigator never made a report and he only copied reports that had existed. This was corroborated by the witnesses who were forced to lie in court by the police. And there are differences in the writing on the report with Bashyam's handwriting. Finally Bashyam admitted that he was not the one who wrote the writing but his friend wrote it. After hearing this, 
The panel of judges became annoyed with the witnesses who gave false statements. They also sentenced witnesses who gave false statements to six months in prison and carried out a more in-depth examination of the investigators. Knowing his position was increasingly cornered, the director general of police finally acted as the defendant's lawyer in the case. Next, the headman gathered the Arula tribesmen to ask Senjini to withdraw her lawsuit in court. He also threatened the people of the Arula tribe that he would destroy their home if Senjini did not withdraw her lawsuit. The next day, it was Guru Murthy's turn to order his members to take Senjini to the police station. However, Senjini refused if she was not accompanied by a lawyer. The police then acted by kidnapping Senjini's daughter. Then automatically Senjini will follow to the police station. The plan was successful, Senjini followed him to the police station. Their Guru Murthy asked Senjini to withdraw her lawsuit in court. He is also willing to give Senjini the money she wants. However, Senjini again refused the offer it made Guru Murthy felt angry and then she got slapped because of that. Not long after that, the regional police chief called to release Senjini and drove Senjini home in a police car. Turns out, before going to the police station, Senjini had called Chandru first and told him what had happened. Upon hearing this, Chandru went straight to one of the judges. The judge then called the regional police chief to request that Senjini be released. Therefore, the regional police chief scolded Guru Murthy, and he ordered to immediately release Senjini and take her by official car. This made the headman surprised to see the police who escorted her. The next day, the trial was resumed. This time, the police presented witnesses who knew the escape of the three detainees. The first was a coffee shop owner who said he had seen three suspicious people running towards Kerala province. Furthermore, the police also proposed that Vera was Aruta's employer. Vera says that some time ago she got a call from Aruta saying that they escaped from custody and were about to go out of town. Vera is sure that it is Aruta's voice as he has worked for 10 years. Vera also says if he has also informed Senjini about it. After that, Chandru again asked for time to prepare his defense and the panel of judges granted Chandru's request. When Chandru is at home, he feels angry to Senjini because she didn't tell him the truth in the first place. Chandru also wanted to step down as a lawyer for Senjini. However, Mithra tries to plead with Chandru and says that she told Senjini not to say it. That's because Mithra believes that as a teacher there, she knows that the three people are still illiterate. So it is impossible to know how to use the phone. So, if it was Iruta's voice there must be someone helping him to make the call. After hearing Mithra's explanation, Chandra wakes up and he is willing to come back to defend Sanjini. Next, Chandra checks the phone number that comes into Vera's phone. After searching one by one, he finally found the phone number used by Aruta to call Vera. The number turned out to be from Kerala province. Then, Chandru, Mithra and Senjini rush to Kerala to meet Rajesh, who is the owner of the payphone. After finishing the conversation, Rajesh finally agreed to be a witness in court. At the next trial, Rajesh said that some time ago there were four people who entered his payphone and they claimed to be police who were conducting an investigation. And Rajesh appointed Guru Murthy and his members. Guru Murthy who felt cornered then said that he was forced to disguise himself as Aruta to find the whereabouts of the three prisoners. Because he was under pressure from the headmen and political parties to immediately resolve all the case. But Guru Murthy's statement contradicted Vera's statement, who was sure that it was Aruta's voice. After hearing this, Chandru filed a CBI investigation because the police had committed many lies and irregularities. Chandru also asked a trustworthy police named Inspector General Virasamy to conduct an investigation. On the other side, Ramahan immediately goes to Virasamy and asks him not to embarrass the police department. After that, Chandra meets Virasami. Virasami wonders why he would cooperate with a lawyer who doesn't trust police and hates police. Chandra responded to the statement with the case file presented. He says to study the file. It will prove that there are police officers who are crueler than criminals. After reading the case file, Virasami and Chandra rush to the lowest caste to get information. From that meeting, Virasami burst into tears hearing the police atrocities and the criminalization they had committed. Next, Virasami conducts an investigation by examining Guru Murthy and his members. During the examination, the good old policeman also said that he was not sure if the three prisoners were the real perpetrators. He also disapproved of the actions taken by his colleagues because these actions were very inhumane. After that, together with Chandru, they also searched for the three prisoners in Kerala prison but they did not find them. Later, they found police records regarding the discovery of the body of an accident victim at one of the police stations. After the photo is given to Mithra, Mithra becomes sad because the corpse in the photo is Raj. Mithra breaks the news to Senjini. Upon hearing that, Senjini became hysterical in tears. Not only that, the families of the other two prisoners also felt desperate for the safety of their families. With new evidence of the discovery of Raja's body, Ramahan becomes very angry because he is increasingly cornered. Then, he forced Guru Murthy to tell him what really happened. Guru Murthy tells that he kept on torturing Raj because he didn't admit to the theft. He was angry because he was pressured from various parties to solve the case. However, after some time Raj is found dead. Finally, Guru Murthy takes Raja's body and dumps it on the side of the road as if he was the victim of an accident. He also transferred Iruta and Mosakati to another prison. After that, Guru Murthy and his members made a scenario as if the three prisoners had escaped. During the trial, Ramahan argued that Raja's body was found outside detention. So it can't be called because of violence from the police. However, 
This was denied by Chandru. He says if Raj had died first then his body was dumped somewhere else. He also points out the strangeness of Raj's death and the absurd chronology of the escape of the three prisoners. Therefore, Chandru again asked the panel of judges to look for Iruta and Mosakati because they were the only witnesses. The judge finally gave time to search for the two men and the trial was adjourned again. On the other side, Mithra, Senjini and some other activists staged a demonstration to demand justice for Raj and his two brothers. Meanwhile, Chandru is approached by Ramahan who tries to grip him mentally. However, Chandru only replied that he only relied on the law as his weapon. While looking at Guru Murthy, Chandru says he will not spare the person who killed Raj. On the other hand, Virasami was summoned by the regional police chief. The regional police chief asks Virasami to win the police because if he loses the image of the police will be lowered. But Virasami refused because he said that what he did was based on conscience and that it was also to protect the image of the police. Virasami then continued to carry out a thorough investigation including examining the forensic evidence found and the fingerprint evidence found at the headman's house. He also checked the owner of the jewelry shop where the evidence was sold. From there it is known that the real culprit is not Raj but someone else. Meanwhile, Senjini was summoned by the regional police chief. The regional police Police chief asked Senjini to withdraw her lawsuit in court and she would be compensated. However, it was rejected by Senjini. On the other side, Chandru and Mithra find Aruta and Mosakati in a prison in Kerala. This made Guru Murthy very angry because he would be in big trouble with Aruta and Mosakati being found. At the umpteenth trial, Mosakati was presented as a witness. In front of the trial, he said that they continued to be tortured for not admitting to having committed theft. The police also abused Raja's younger sister. Not only that, he also said that Guru Murthy repeatedly kicked Raja's chest and hung Raja's body. At midnight, he tries to wake Raj but he is not moving. Then the police put chili powder in Raj's eyes. However, there was still no response from Raj. Next, Mosakari said if the police closed their eyes and blindfolded Iruta and they were taken to another prison. Furthermore, the examination continued to the forensic doctor who performed an autopsy on Raj's body. He says that Raj's ribs have been broken and he found shoe prints on his chest. Apart from that, he also finds chili powder in Raj's eyes. The doctor said that generally it would cause a great reaction in great eyes but not in Raj's eyes. The doctor also added that it is almost certain that a person will not be able to walk far when there is chili powder in his eyes. Next, Virasami reported the results of the investigation he carried out if two fingerprints were found at the crime scene, namely Raj's and the real thief's. He had also learned from the jewelry shop owner that it was not Raj who was selling the jewelry but someone else. Virasami also says that Guru Murthy has taken bribes from the real culprits. Ramahan says that Virasami's statement is irrelevant to the case of Raj's death. However, Chandru refuted Ramahan's statement with the results of the crime scene at the location where Raj's body was found, where the footprints found look the same as Guru Murthy's, and the car tire tracks look the same as Guru Murthy's car tracks. The statement was also corroborated by the results of Virasami's investigation which said that the case that befell the three people was an act of criminalization committed by Guru Murthy and his members, and Raj had died in custody before he was banished. Then lawyers from both sides argued with each other. After that, the trial was adjourned for the judge's deliberation. After a while, the judge continued the trial with the agenda of reading the verdict. The panel of judges finally decided that if Raj was not proven to have stolen, Garuda and Mosakati had to be released. The judge also ruled that Guru Murthy and his members should be held responsible and punished for the criminalization and murder they had committed against Raj. In addition, the judge also ruled that the state should compensate Senjini as much as $4,000, as well as Iruta and Mosakati and Raj's younger sister to be compensated. There the judge also decided that the state should give a quarter of the land in the middle of the village to the Irula tribe.